Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to learn about how to conduct BCP audit, how to perform BCP audit. In this session, we're going to discuss about introduction of BCP DR. We're going to discuss about um, uh, important metrics, the process of BCP and what are the necessary documentations required for conducting a BCP. And when you're preparing a report, what can be the ideal format of the report? If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon also to make sure you should not miss any of my videos, which I'm going to upload in future. And uh, and about me, my name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So let's start with the first part. If you're talking about the BCP, okay, BCP is a strategic document which talk about how to continue the service in the case of disaster. And DR is the IT plan. If you can see here, DR is the IT plan, which is all about recovering the IT service in the case of disaster. One example I can give you. Suppose this is the site one we have. And this is the site two we have. We also have a spare site here. Give me a second. So we have a spare site here. So currently all the service is basically provide from the site one to the customer. In the case of site one is basically down because of any reason we switch to the spare site, which can able to handle the load. We ensure that, okay, there's no downtime for the customer or we can able to provide the service with the acceptable level of functions and all that. But we know that site one will take more time to recover. So we decided to move the operation to the secondary site. So doing this is part of a DR doing this is also DR, but it is DR is all about recovering from the disaster. So this is the DR plan. This is the contingency plan. All these plan is basically part of the BCP. So BCP is a strategic document which talk about how to continue, uh, how to continue the process, continue the technology and people in the organization in the case of disaster and DR is more about restoring our services. So we have one standard also, which is called as a ISO 22301, which talk about how to build the BCP system in the organization and companies basically go for audit based on a BCMS also, which is called 22301. In this particular session, I'm going to cover only about the mandatory checklist that is required for conducting a BCP audit. Okay. So as I said, BCP is a strategic document where the DR is a tactical document. We talk about more like a this recovery of the IT resources in the case of disaster. But along with that, BCP have other plans also. So what is the primary goal of BCP? Meeting the stakeholders. So before getting to work analysis, the BCP and its associate resource and technology, you will want to take some preparation steps. So objective of a good BCP plan is that protect employees. That is a primary uh, requirement we have, you can say like that restore the critical business process, restore the related infrastructure, prevent or mitigate the effect of disaster and minimize the legal impact. That is basically the ultimate objective of the good BCP plan. So if I am an auditor and I know the protect employees is an important thing, restore critical business process is an important thing, restore related infrastructure is an important thing. Now I will look for the documents which can validate these objectives. One example, I can give you protect employees. So I will check for the physical safety, physical security, what kind of a physical safety, what kind of physical security they have, which basically address the people safety. Does their extinguisher systems are basically up to date with the recent tested parameters. We will check for the recent dates when it got tested because it is directly to the protect employees. One example is restore the critical business process. So we will check for the BIA document which talk about, which capture the information about the recovery criticality. What are the process we need to restore first? We look for the DR plan. So when we auditing BCP, we have to consider all these factors. Okay, plan should address employee protection, restore the critical business process, restore the related infrastructure, prevent or mitigate the effect of disaster and minimize the legal impact. Okay, so if you can see, we have a site one and we have a site two. We have a spare site, as I said, spare site. So in the case of disaster, this is basically having a 40 server. This is basically 20 server and the site two is basically having a capability of the 40 server. Example like the site one is basically down. 
I switch that 40 server load to side two, which is 20 servers or spare side. Definitely 40 server load is transferred to 20 server because of we only supporting the critical processes. So it cannot be there for long time. Recovering this will take some time. So what we did, we initiate the DR here where we're trying to up this side because its site has a 40 server restoring a services there. But the question is that in the case of disaster, we cannot able to restore everything on a same time. Same like during a COVID crisis, we have a limited doctors, we have a limited nurse to handle the patient. So what they did, they identify which one is critical and all that. And according to that, they have prioritized and they start restoring the things. Same thing happened here. According to BI and DR report, they start restoring first, which is very critical. And by this, they can able to up the site and operations on the site too. And from there, the customer will basically continue the services. Same thing here, I'm doing this session. During a session, there will be a power failure. So I switch to UPS, but UPS is not a, a permanent solution. Switch to generator, it's not a permanent solution. So in this downtime, I need to move my desktop. I need to call electrician. I need to call all those things. That is basically part of a DR. But make sure you should not face any kind of a downtime in my session. Okay, so these are the things we have. So I refer the NIST document and according to that, I basically sharing the reference of BCP. So this is called as a NIST 834. Okay, so always remember whenever you're talking about BCP. So this is basically a process of building a BCP plan. Okay, it is a process of building a BCP plan. So here I have taken the reference of NIST 834, which talk about how to build BCP. So whenever any kind of a system you want to build, the first most important thing, we need a contingency policy because policy talk about why we need. Okay, policy talk about why we need. So any kind of a system, any kind of a initiative you want, it should be backed and supported by the policy because policy talk about why and it is backed and supported by the management. So from an auditor perspective, I will first look for the contingency policy, which clearly reflect the statement of the senior management intention. Then based on the policy, we conduct the BIA. As you know, it is not possible for us to restore everything. So with the help of BIA, we can able to prioritize what need to be recovered first and what need to be recovered later. Once you're done with the BIA, you will identify the preventative control to mitigate some of the risk. And the risk which is left after implementing control like earthquake, flood and all that, we need to handle the crisis according to that. So we create a contingency strategy. Once we create a contingency strategy, we, along with the, okay, we need to go for hot site, cold site, warm site. We basically prepare the contingency plan and we submit this plan to the senior management for an approval. And once the management is basically approved that, then we basically test the plan. And on a regular basis, we basically update the plan. So this is the high level BCP steps we have. The reason of sharing this reference, because you need to know this concept before going to audit the BCP. Okay, prop said about BIA. So you will look for the BI document. Prop said policy is the first thing. So I will look for the policy. So this is how the B BCP works in the system. Okay, so now we're going to discuss about how to conduct audit of a BCP system. That is in my next slide. So before going to start the BCP audit, we have some normal outcome example. I am going for the PCP. I have some common outcome of a good BCP plan. Okay. So the first is called as a validating the effectiveness of the plan. So as an IS auditor, you should be familiar with the business, the information system in use and the extent of the business dependence on the IT team An auditor basically focus should be on validating the plan against this knowledge here. So we know the business, we know the information system, and that is something we check in the BCV plan because we had a meeting with the business stakeholders. We had a meeting with the process owners and as per them, that is critical. That is the information I'm going to check in the BCP is that BCV plan capture their criticality. That is the one thing. Second important thing is all about verifying the preventative control and ensure the continuity. So IS auditor will verify the existence and correct functioning of all the preventative controls. The scrutiny of the disaster recovery site as its location uh, uh, and the general control security related to it should be essential part of the audit. So we will check what, whether we have a necessary control in place on the primary side and also in the secondary side. One example is appropriate biometric control should be there, appropriate access control should be there, transportation facility, okay, accessibility of a site, all those things. 
Third, we have to review all the evidence related to the effectiveness of the continuity and recovery. They have an effective plan which ensure the continuity recovery. For that, we need to collect all the documents. So effective recovery is not completed merely acting on the day of disaster, but by sustained the activity that are complete in due course with the objective of remaining in a state of preparedness for a disaster. Number of activity need to be performed on a day to day basis to ensure the availability of the systems at all the time and is required and recovery following the disaster. And finally is that whatever the plan we have, it should meet the organization goals. So when I'm looking for the BCP audit, these are basically a good outcome of the good BCP plan with the based on that only I'm conducting the audit. So question is how to start. Let's move to the next part. Now, next important thing which we need to understand is a field work. After sending a BCP audit plan or scope charter, whatever we have to the BCP head, we got a meeting, we collect the, all the documents and all that. We reviewed all the documents, we review all the functions. Now, we just need to confirm those documents are accurate and all that. So we need to start the field work where I will have a meeting with the, all the respective owners, custodians, subject matter experts and understand the effectiveness. So when you auditing your BCP policy, you should assess the BCP program charter to confirm that it is accurately detailed the specific plannings and roles accountability for assigning the responsibility. So if we take example, we have a first part policy because policy talk about why. Then based on the policy, we have a BCP system. And then BCP system basically provide the solution. So there's no point of directly auditing a solution until unless we don't have a visibility of a policy. So it is very important to confirm the definitive roles are clearly outlined and that management properly and proactively monitor against such assigned responsibility. So that is the most important thing we have. So we will basically check the policy and we also verify the effectiveness of policy because sometimes policy is there, but it is not sign off by the management, which is a, a you know, medium risk. So first we need to obtain the policy and check whether it is sign off by the management. Okay. And question we also need to see because policy is subject to review annually or in the case of business change, management change or emergency change. So we also need to verify how often, okay, how often it is basically reviewed and approved by the senior executive. That is the most important thing. Second is we need to also see if the BCP is basically properly documented. So obtain the copy and check the version history. When was the last revision happen? Check the BCP policy is current. Is it clear and it is effective? That is another important thing that we try to validate. We assess the BCP program charter. Okay, because charter is basically talk about who does what. So we will check whether roles and responsibility has been defined. We validating the BCP in relation to the BIA. We check for is it document the mission critical systems operation requirement and whatever the documents we have, do we have a proper review and approvals? Okay. We can ask for the mail records and everything. So this is more from the point of view, whether policy is effective or not, whether policy has been followed or not, whether program charter, which is a BCP program charter, which capture how the BCP work is basically appropriate or not. So in BCP, the most important thing is basically called as a BIA. So BIA is basically all about what need to be restored and how we need to restore because BIA helped me to prioritize. It's not possible for me to protect everything in the case of disaster and restore everything in the case of disaster. So we need to prioritize that. And BIA is a heart and brain of BCP. And based on the BIA only, we prepare the recovery strategy that we need to go for hot side, cold side and warm side. So in this, we determine if the comprehensive BIA is the basis for business content decision has been done. How? We will collect the business report. We'll collect the risk assessment report of the business function, understand the criticality and impact. And according to that, we will check whether BIA has captured those details properly or not. Have the business impact criteria been defined, which called as a MTD, RTO and RPO. So any BIA methodology has been used. So we have a NIST based BIA. We have a ISO based BIA, so we can obtain the BIA form. Let me show you how the BIA form look like. If you notice, this is basically the BIA form. Here we mention about pay vendor invoice. Okay. Then we talk about, uh, this is my business process. Then we try to identify what is the impact and criticality with the help of 
risk assessment we can able to identify based on MTD, RT and RPO. We don't have a time right now to cover, but MTD is all about the acceptable uh, risk that we take for any mission. RTO is the time to restore the services and RPO is all about the acceptable data loss. So what we have currently understood, the pay vendor invoice for 72 hours is a maximum risk they can able to take from the downtime and 48 hours in which we need to restore and 12 hours is the backup. And then we identify this is the server which can able to restore in 24 hours. We have others, other vendor also which giving me commitment, but this, this server is giving, this vendor is giving me commitment of 24 hours. So this is a kind of a BIA form we have. We will check whether the BIA form has basically captured necessary data and all that. Okay, BIA methodology has been followed. Was BIA perform and document aligned with the criteria which is established? Okay, how we do that? Suppose as I said, BIA form we'll see. We'll see the business process and we map that business process with the business process document what we get. We'll check the minutes of meeting record and against that we will check whether based on that particular parameter is the MTD RTO has been calculated because MTD given by the business owners because by end of the day they are the one who own the risk. So we need to determine whether you know BI was performed according to the criteria and BI is basically performed as per the business objective. We also check for the RTO and RPO is it captured properly by BIA because as I said BIA is the driving factor for recovery strategy. So we will check whether RTO and RPO has been defined on an email does we get an approvals okay we also assess the RTO RPO for the practical reasonable like they saying in RTO mean that in two hours we need to restore we will see whether practically it is possible for that we will see the recent BCP test and check whether in the defined RTO uh, whether application was able to restore in the defined RPO the data was able to recover back so we will see all this practicality and assessment of the RT and RPO. Sometimes what happened for a sake, they just mentioned the RTO. That okay, in three hour we can keep an RTO. But we will see in the BCP test that are, whether as per the plan, okay, is the test was achieved the defined goal. Because ultimate goal of a BCP testing is to see the effectiveness of the plan. So if RTO say three hour in the test, we will see whether in three hour they able to restore. And if it exceed, do they work on any kind of an uh, action plan and all that. We'll also look for those data. So this kind of a documents we basically try to collect. We also see is the BIA result approved by the CNA management. In that case, we can ask for the mail records, email records and all that. And we also need to check whether recovery strategy is aligned with the result of BIA. Whatever capture in the BIA, this is this is critical. And for that, we need a hot site, cold site, warm site. According to that, did we plan the recovery strategy? Because what document goes on the operation is the recovery strategy document only, a DR document only. You're getting a point. Recovery strategy is basically talk about how to restore. And then that will be submit to the business management for an approval. And based on that recovery strategy document, we prepare the DR plan. And by end of the day, everyone get hold of a DR plan in the case of emergency. And DR plan only talk about what need to be restored first. So this last point is very important. Like is your recovery strategies aligned with the result of BIA? Let me draw it so you get a better visibility. So this is basically the BIA. BIA basically add into recovery strategy and recovery strategy basically submit to the business management for an approval, senior management for an approval. Based on that, we prepare the DR plan. And this plan is basically followed by everyone. In my absence, anyone can follow the DR plan and he get a visibility what we need to restore first. Clear? So this is the important areas we have. We look from the BIA perspective. Now let's move to the next part. So after doing a BIA validation, we look for the recovery plan because as I said, based on the BIA, we prepare the recovery strategy and that drive the DR recovery plan. So we will check whether plan is accurate. So we have some audit step for checking a recovery plan. The first thing is that we verify the recovery plan is exist and all. Okay. So we obtain and review the copy of DR plan. We also determine if they are complete or current and verify mail records. On email definitely we sending a plan. On email we sending for a plan approval we collect that mail records. We compare the completion date of a DR plan revision history against the mail record. Okay on email on this date it was sent. And in the version history, it talk about the same date. So this is how you can able to verify. 
if they say no it's not been sent on a email for an acceptance and all then then it is not considered as a plan approval from the management whenever we saying we we sending a document for sign off and all that it is sent on a email and their email acceptance from the senior management email acceptance is considered as a valid plan so we need to verify if executive management here you can see we need to verify if executive management has approved the funding for the dr site okay testing of the disaster recovery plan we'll look for the business case which is submitted by the dr coordinator we we'll talk about the valuation of the bcp plan we'll look for the email record which is basically reply by the senior management on the approval of the budget for the dr plan okay because this is how you can able to verify like whether plan was basically execute okay as per the budget because when we going for the internal audit where we are working for the internal audit and that is a audit called as a third line of defense management seriously want to know whether the things was delivered as per the budget or whether it is overseed the budget or it was below the budget and if it's below the budget where is the money gone so sometimes fraud is also involved there we ask for the receipt reports and everything in that case now apart from that we also verify business continuity recovery plan has been kept current we reflect relevant changes to the business process we verify if all application it infrastructure have been identified in the recovery plan how we will see the bia report and see as per the bia report is the plan is basically updated we also ensure that adequate documentation exists to perform a recovery in the case of disaster disaster or loss of data so that is basically part of a recovery plan the next thing is called as a audit step for checking the plan is tested okay because once we create a plan it need to be test we have a different type of test okay an ultimate goal of testing the dr plan is to see the effectiveness of the plan okay that is the ultimate goal we have for testing the dr plan one thing i would like to tell you here is uh, we have this uh, wrong observation about the testing of the dr plan the reason of testing the dr plan suppose i am the one who created a plan and in my absence someone else want to execute the plan okay so plan should be so detailed and easy to understand with the person with the basic it skill can execute that's why we do the dr testing on a regular basis depending upon the le level of testing so example like we test today dr plan in the dr plan it is mentioned in 24 hour we can able to restore the service we will check whether in 24 hour by this process we can able to restore the service or not in the case of disaster you need to contact this contact person we will check by dialing that number and see whether the person is available during that time so it give me assurance yes i test the plan so in my absence if someone read the plan can able to execute so here we talking about whether the plan was tested or not so we verify testing cycles as per the policy as per the bcp procedure test need to be done in 6 months or 1 year against that we do that how by asking for the samples of email records which talking about like we initiating this testing today or any kind of a email record we talk about when the when the things will be initiated when the testing will be done then testing done details of the email that records we can able to collect by which it get the visibility yes as per the procedure they perform the testing we verify if business continuity plan is basically tested regularly as per the sop verify testing policy exists because any kind of an activity you want to do in the system you need a policy for that because policy talk about the governance we also need to verify if testing include both walk through and full scale drill of interim process and we also need to check do we have a uh, approval for that because sometime any performing this kind of a testing it impact the business operation we also verify if test results were documented and we also obtain the copy in this case and compare about the recent date okay compare the recent date we also verify the email records regarding a senior management has informed the testing and results because against that it is completely against the business objective we will also check like what we have plan as per the dr and during a testing are they able to achieve the defined objective like as per them this business need to be restored in 4 hours 5 hour we will verify through the result that is that business were restored in defined 4 hour and if not what is the action plan taken by the bcp team do they documented that is a document somewhere so that kind of a information we look for okay we'll also see the recipient list to whom they forward the report make sure they have not forward the report to any kind of external person 
ओके ओनली द अप्रूव टीम मेंबर्स वॉज पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग इज एवरी वन हैज अटेंडेड द ट्रेनिंग एवरी वन अटेंडेड द टेस्टिंग एक्टिविटीज हु एवर बेसिकली पार्ट ऑफ द कॉन्टैक्ट लिस्ट इज सो ऑल दो थिंग्स इज बेसिकली पार्ट ऑफ द ऑडिट प्लान टेस्ट नाउ अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इन द वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग विच इज एडेड इन द रिकवरी प्लान विच इज मिसिंग हेयर इज वी कॉल द सैम्पल ऑफ द पीपल इन द लिस्ट टू वेरीफाई we visit the dr site like we have a alternate site where we need to move the operation so we look for the validity compatibility suitability okay main processing facility we also interview the user on the alternate site and it personnel okay it's very important for us okay so we verify uh whether security at the offset facility ensure the adequacy we verify if the organization invested investment related to the insurance because sometime what happen we take a insurance also we we'll, we we'll look for the insurance copy we also verify access control and appropriate biometric so in the case of disaster do they have access to the secondary site only have a authorization list of people who can access the alternate site do they have a same level of capability what is agreed in the dr plan okay checking for the redundancy configuration so all those things is basically part of this audit steps we also need to check in the plan that do we have a detailed documentation about the step by step process we need to see the contact list we need to we need to check the list of approved people who will be involved in the dr plan is it mentioned appropriately in the plan okay numbers are valid okay and in the access control in the biometric is their access has been given so all those things we try to validate and if any employee has left is his access has been revoked so we will look for the recent access management system and compare that so this is basically the steps of audit collect all this data so you can collect all this data and based on the data you can basically prepare the summary report so one sample i have here which give you visibility about so this is how the summary we create example i have taken some key risk like alignment between the business continuity and corporate objective so if you go by the industry standard it is always rate as a high because if bcp is against the business objective then it is a high risk because we spending our budget business cost everything and after that also the bcp plan is basically uh, against the corporate object it's a concern then id disaster recovery plan we found some findings in the id disaster recovery plan we found some business continuity testing report missing so we have rate them as a medium we found dr site have a insufficient control so we rate them medium so i'm just giving you sample here okay when you preparing a bcp report first you need to document the summary table So this kind of a summary table you can create okay that kind of a summary table you can create one thing is that first you share the draft report okay draft report to the bcp audit a bcp head okay and give them a visibility about what we have find along with the evidence okay and during a bcp audit if you find something very critical immediately you need to notify later on you can document but it is a responsibility as a part of an auditor you need to notify that's the most important thing you must do that okay so i just document the high level key risk area here i just giving example and this is how your report format will be like we need to first give the heading of the risk what you have identify okay so example like we have identify one risk like alignment between the business continuity and corporate objectives or business objective you can say so we identify one risk so then i will explain about this issue like we have review the key business continuity documentation we had a discussion with the business owners dr coordinators regarding a business continuity strategy and uh, continue alignment with the strategies and everything and we understand the people are uh, people are basically you know organization as a great assets we were unable to confirm that bcp plan has formally mapped to the abc corporate plan and strategy to fully understand how disaster would impact the organization ability to achieve the strategy objective uh, bcp is not aligned to the corporate strategy objective there is a risk of uh, uh, divergence between the organization priorities what senior management deem for their priority so what they have agreed what is document it is missing so we therefore recommend the business continuity strategy is reviewed and update to ensure alignment with, with between the organization objective so this kind of a statement we need to mention so we have rating them medium okay as per the company's risk tolerance and uh, we also give them background okay suggestions 
like review the key business continuity documentations where you find the gap so they should review the current bcp to ensure that is aligned to strategic objectives and they should include reviewing how the current bcp arrangement maintain the abc limited ability to achieve the strategy objectives in the event of disaster so you can basically give the information of a finding you can talk about the recommendations okay you are you are responsible for giving a recommendations and they are basically responsible for uh, providing the action plan so there suppose they have responses accept okay we accepting your finding so we will document the owner who will taking an action to mitigate that risk okay we need to define the completion date so on that particular date we will do the follow up and ask for the evidence to check whether it is closed so one example as i said aligned between the business continuity and corporate objective so as for the corporate objective three or four business applications are critical but during an audit we discover in bia they have not added that so things are not as per the business objective so we told them revalidate the business and added then a bia so the bcp team has accepted that as a as a concern and then they define who will be responsible for that to close that finding and define the completion date and on that date me as an auditor do the follow because i am responsible for closing those findings i want to make sure that okay audity will get it close those things and ask for the evidence so this is how the bcp audit works in the organization if you find this video useful do share in your network it might be beneficial for those aspirant who want to make audit as a career there is another video i made how to conduct internal audit i can share in the description box and uh, let me know uh, what will be the next video you want okay to be create in a comment box and what is the best thing you like about this video do share in the comment box my name is prabnair and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you